Well, that's a really great way to start. Sorry about that. I'm not. It was my intention. I was holding the burp off. I was like, quickly hit record. I'm going to burp. And then I burped. I also just walked up some stairs, so I'm a little puffed out. Uh-oh. And I'm really gassy because I just, like, I, all I did was eat chips. Why am I burping? I need to work out the science of a burp. I thought burps were when you swallow air. Unless I inhale food so fast, which is true, that I'm just absolutely, like, fist falling. What? Fist falling? What is that? Fistfuls of chips, right? This is what I was trying to say. And then I'm throwing them down so rapidly that air's getting trapped in the chip. In the. I honestly, I have no idea what I'm talking about. This is a podcast. It's called Complete Drivel. And as you can see from the last 30 seconds, it's a piece of shit. Um, things I want to talk about Co- my coffee withdrawals, something called the migraine pose. Um, and I want to, we'll, we'll start with something uh, topical now, but because I'm uploading this in like a week and a half, this is going to be old news, but I wanted to discuss it. I just need to sniff. Excuse me. I had to take some of my, um, what do you call it? Nasal spray that I'm addicted to. Um, I went and bought it the other day because I needed to, you know, obviously get my habit. What is it? Get my habit? I'm not having a great morning. Um, uh, Fill my... Ha- oh, this is this is a disaster. I went to the chemist to go buy it. And I was like, can I please have the, you know, this brand nasal spray? And she goes, okay, don't use it for more than three days, though. <laughs> I've been on it for four years. Usually I'd laugh and say, well, I've been on it for four years. But I did that once and then she refused to sell it to me. And that's when I turned into a, like, crack-addicted drug whore. I was like, what? I'm joking. I'm joking. I need it, please. Oh, and she wouldn't sell it to me. She was like, well, no, here's a different solution. You, I really can't, you know, it's, it goes against my moral code. And I was ready to just punch her in the face, take it and run. Like an actual crack addict. I just, I can't breathe without it. It's so bad. And I've, like, I, I need to wean myself off it. Anyway. What I want to talk about is something, it's, let me, it's this Scarlett Johansson role where she plays a transgender man. Um, Now, she recently got into a little bit of trouble for playing a Japanese role. I was Ghost in the Shell. I haven't seen it. Not, I'm not really into that genre of film, but a Ghost in the Shell is humongous. Japanese. I'm just spitballing here. It's a, it's a, it's a huge thing, right? But it's, it's, she's white. Like, couldn't they cast someone of like Japanese origin in the film? Like, why would you cast Scarlett Johansson? And I think, I mean, sure, it's an American film, but it's a Japanese story. And then there's also one. There was one Emma Stone. I can't think of the film again. I did no research going into this. Um, where she plays a Hawaiian girl. She's a pasty redhead. And the story is based off this Hawaiian girl, but she it's a true story, and she's obviously not Hawaiian. And the whole issue of why can't we give these roles to a Hawaiian girl, a Japanese girl, and now um, with this transgender film coming out, why can't a transgender uh, person play the lead role in this film? Um, uh, the film's called Rub and Tug. <laughs> How perfect. Uh, hold on, I'm being served. Oh, I've just clicked a goddamn link and now that autoplay. Ooh! I hate autoplay. Oh, Jamie Oliver. And now I can't click it to stop because it takes me to the ad and now I've just lost. Oh my God, I want to punch. News.com, please stop autoplaying your stupid videos. Anyway, so the film is called Rub and Tug and it's the story of a massage parlor operator and a pimp who was a huge crime figure, right? Um, and it was a woman, born um, born a woman, but identified as a man and looks nothing like Scarlett Johansson, to be fair. But she's cast in the role and a lot of people got really upset uh, her defence was, well, you didn't get upset when, you know, men were playing uh, transgender characters in uh, Trans America or, or other, other TV shows. And that was her defence. That was what she tweeted. And I've always been on, like, 
I've always been on this weird, well, it's Hollywood, you know, they're an awful, awful, terrible industry. Um, and then I thought to myself, well, we should be offering these roles to, you know, the Japanese, to play a Japanese character. Why can't I mean, we have Jap- Japanese actors and actresses we have transgender actors and actresses why can't we give them these roles and it's the whole thing of oh we need a big hollywood star to bring the money in and that's my theory anyway which i think which i thought at the time well that's how the industry works but then i was like no that's bullshit come on that is trash you are disgusting like if we want oh god this is going to Anyway, if, if you want change to happen, you need to make the change. This is the weird thing that I, I was reading the article and initially I was like, oh, why can't, you know, it's Hollywood. They want a big name actress. Um, you know, there aren't many big name transgender actresses. Um, so, you know, they can't. And then I was like, what am I saying? That's just, no, that's bullshit. There are no big name transgender actresses, or not many, um, because they haven't been given the chance um, to play not just transgender characters, but any characters in general, because I just think Hollywood has this. It's so safe and it's so snoozy. And then I was like, I'm glad she stepped down. She said, I'm not going to play it because everyone was getting angry at her. And I 100% agree. She should not play it. And whether the film will go ahead or not, I'm really hoping they put a transgender character to play a transgender person. It's just natural. Like a lot of the gay gay actors don't get straight roles because they're too gay. But they're actors. Like, like it's so it's so weird. And I watched recently. Uh, Tab Hunter passed away, uh, eighty six, and he's oh my god, so hot. Even as an eighty six year old, and and he was you know back in the early early days of film he was like the heartthrob and he was gay and of course he couldn't come out as gay because then he lose his Hollywood heartthrob status um and so he remained in the closet and he had a lot of what they call beards if you're not sure what a beard is which I didn't realize a beard is like you're gay but you're married to a woman and she knows you're gay but she's your beard she's your mask she's hiding the fact that you're gay from everyone so they called them beards and there was other actresses who had husbands who were beards because they were lesbians. Uh, and so this whole beard situation comes out. And that's that's where it came from. I was fascinated by that. Because I'd heard that thrown around like, oh, that's just his beard. And I was like, but he doesn't have a beard. He's clean shaven. I just, I, I just, and then I've gone into watching all these Hollywood documentaries about it all. And it is unbelievably the most fucked up industry it's so bullshit and we, we all want you know the me too movements happened because of hollywood because of how disgusting it is and then you know equal rights for women like it, what i find interesting is that it's been going on for so long but now it's you know because it's got the numbers of people who were horrified change is actually happening and it's the same with this scarlett johansson situation change is only happening because people have said no, it's wrong. We, it's, Yes, you shouldn't be playing this role. There are a lot of other deserving people who have gone through the experience that are way more qualified and can do a much better job of it. Why can't we give them the opportunity? And we need to... Oh, I'm, I went all deep and weird and I was like, yes, why? Like, here I am going, oh, it's just the industry. But that's what people were doing before, you know, the Harvey Weinstein thing came out. They were, oh, it's just the industry. And I can't believe that that was the mindset that I was in. And I've got to really work hard at, at going, no, no, it's it's bad. Just because it happens and it's happened for years doesn't mean it should continue to happen. You know, change needs... To, oh, I got so philosophical. Oh, I ruined it. I got so... Oh, philosophical. Philosophical. I'm being so philosophical. Like... like I, I guess Scarlett was, was annoyed that everyone got angry at her. And then she realised, she either caved to public pressure or she realised that, you know, oh, did you hear that? It was my stomach. More burps. That she should not be doing this role. I, I, and I agree. I think um, I, I think a transgender 
um, women should be playing this role. Give them the chance. And then start being more inclusive. My God, Hollywood is just all safe, boring white people. Anyways, and then you sort of want to practice what you preach. Like, uh, I will jump on board things when I feel like they're, it's not okay. You need to voice that because I've found, you, you look at a lot of stuff, it's things only change because of mass opinion. Mass opinion has a huge influence uh, in what people like Hollywood do, act and say. And then you'll always get people who are on the other side of the fence who are like, no, like, you know, how everyone was wearing black to, I think it was the Oscars, um, you know, to support the Me Too movement. And some people were like, how does that help the movement? You're just wearing a black costume. But change is slow and it just shows you that everyone is in in support of the movement and everyone wants it to happen. And a lot of people are unsure how to do things. I know, I never know. Like, who am I? What can I do? But, you know, we can talk about it. We can voice our opinions. Uh, we can voice our uninformed opinions and read all the comments we get. I like getting comments that completely just take me down. And, you know, I obviously haven't been in certain situations. And so I'll say something and go, yep, I'm pretty sure that's how I feel. Mm, That's what I know of the situation. And then I read it in the media. And I mean, I believe everything that I read and then I have an opinion. And then someone comes back and says, you're an idiot, you're ignorant and you're wrong. And I go, oh my God, am I? I'm so sorry. And then I read what they have to say and then I double check that online. Again, not a great thing to do. Get your facts from the internet. And then you look at situations and I've I've done like 180s. It's so strange. Hollywood is so strange and gross and it is just a business. You know, ultimately... It just wants to make money. It doesn't want to change. It doesn't want to be positive. It doesn't want to, you know, portray itself to be this... Well, it wants to portray itself to be this, like, we have the power. We want everyone to be treated equally, except we're going to pay this actress far less and we're going to do this uh, a lot different and we're going to, you know, the men get paid more and, you know, oh, there's no gender pay gap. It's all based on experience. Mm. That actress has done more movies than that other actor. So why? Why the girl? Oh right, they have the same amount of screen time. But oh, that's weird. I don't know. Mm, it's all bullshit. Whew, that was an intense twelve minutes. Um, <laughs> let's go to a tangent. Coffee withdrawals. So I decided to stop having coffee because I don't know. I thought it was making me put on weight. I like to blame everything other than the actual problem, which is overeating. So I stopped having coffee and I got like proper withdrawals. And then after a while, I felt so good and I started sleeping and everything was amazing. And I was like, I'm never going to have coffee again. And then someone was like, come have a coffee with me. I was like, yep. And I started having decaf for a while, but then decaf's also, I mean, it's covered in chemicals. Yes, I know, conspiracy, but... So I was doing decaf and then I st- I'm back on coffee again and I really want to get off it. But I'm in such a habit of having it every morning um, that I don't, it's just I felt so exhausted without it. Like I honestly thought it didn't do anything for me because I still felt tired during the day. I'd have a coffee and I'd still feel tired. But oh, if I didn't have a coffee, oh my God. I was like sleeping at my desk. And maybe it counteracts the like huge amount of carbs that I have per day. Trying to not have any carbs is like trying to oh, I didn't I can't think of a good analogy. Like trying to I don't know. <laughs> Wow, Christian, you're so witty and quick off the mark. Oh, no. It's like you can't do it. Everything has carbs in it. Like you can't, you can't eat anything that's white. No white products. No ca- Potatoes, gone. Bread, gone. Pasta, gone. What is that? You're left with lettuce leaves. Vegetables. Potato is a vegetable, but no, can't have it. It's the only vegetable that fills you up. 
the other ones you've got to eat so much ramen they're gross and i've started putting like avocado avocado in the oven no i've started putting what's the tree one broccoli i know what it is obviously because that's embarrassing broccoli and i douse it in oil and fry it in the oven then my other major concern is is that even should i even do that does that just fry away all the health properties and then if you boil it then you're like yeah that that uh, that's better than frying it but it tastes like shit why do healthy things taste like shit and unhealthy things taste so good and i've gone back into watching food documentaries again um uh food matters fed up oh god they're awful and then i i realized like i would watch as people who were like fat like bigger than me fat i know right it's possible and they were saying things like oh it's it's really difficult to lose weight and it's you know life's really hard and i was looking at them going have you even tried and then i was like hang on i'm doing exactly what they're doing i'm in the same boat as them i was like oh my god oh my god i can relate it's impossible and they go through their diet and they're eating all these low fat things and they're and they just but all the things that are marketed to marketed to them which are low fat are super high in sugar and they have this Diet Cokes, the, the white breads, you know, and, and they've been told by the supermarket in which they're going to that these are the healthier option. And yes, they are the healthier option. They've got the unhealthy option, which is, you know, the full fat, high sugar, delicious treat. And then they have the healthier option, which is low fat. But you look at it and it's still laced with sugar. And I felt really bad for them because they were eating all this stuff that had so much sugar in it. And then they, they would go into their doctors and be like, yeah, it's been a week. I don't know if I've lost much. They're doing heaps of exercise and they've generally sort of eaten what they perceive to be healthier foods, um, but they're still putting on weight. And it was just it was just so fascinating how uh, they were like, I, I just don't know what else to do. And people and the food industry says exercise. It's all about exercise. No, it's not. It's all about not buying their shit that they produce. And I, I, this was a film, Fed Up was a film from like 2014. And so I Googled where these kids, because it was kids who were really overweight. I Googled these kids to be like, oh, have they lost the weight now? And they're not, they're, they're bigger. And you feel awful for them. And I know how hard it is. Uh, and I wondered if like in my head, because I had a full conversation with myself after this, watching this movie, as I do, you know, I'm like, I want to talk to someone about it. I'll just talk to myself about it. I... I related it to heroin addict. I've never done heroin, so I, I'm not sure. But a lot of people say sugar is as, is as addictive, if not more, than heroin. So imagine you're a heroin addict, right? And, um, of course, every heroin addict doesn't want to be an addict, right? They love the fact that they take it. It gives them that super euphoric hit. And then they've got terrible withdrawals and they've got to find more. You know, it's a terrible life. Imagine they go into rehab, right? And they get rehabilitated and they're like, great, I'm off it. And now heroin, um, I, I know where to get it, but I'm off it and I don't need it, right? So you go walk into a heroin addict, walks into a supermarket. Um, they just see products on the shelf, just general supermarket, supermarket products on the shelf. They're like, great, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to do that. They buy their goods, they go home, right? They haven't encountered any heroin in their day. If you relate that to sugar, the heroin addict goes through rehab, gets a, gets off the stuff, right? Comes back out into the real world and then has to walk into a supermarket with shelves and shelves and shelves of heroin. Right? They want something to eat. But everything has heroin in it. What do you do? I feel like it's the same thing. Like, people are, are treated for their, like, overweightness. Was that fat? Oh, I don't even know what it's called. But then they're like, like they do a retreat, which is what I really want to do a fat person retreat. But then they go back out into the real world and walk into a supermarket where everything is laced with sugar or fat or oils or fatty. And, you know, it's sold to you as, oh, it's healthy. Mm. The other day I bought air, practically air. It was um, seaweed, thin seaweed crisp things, like really thin seaweedy, you know, 
did I? I think I even ate them on here. Like a couple of so delicious. Don't fill you up in the slightest, but it's something to snack on. Um, and I was like, yay, finally something yummy and healthy. And the people were like, no, the salt content is super high. I was like, oh, for the love of Christ, there's nothing. There is nothing you can buy, like carrot sticks, but they don't. Like, bleh, bleh. I don't want to eat carrot sticks dipped in hummus. There's only so much. And your mind is like, I just need chips covered in salt and then some chocolate. And you're just like, oh, you're sitting on the couch trying to like distract your mind watching a movie, like scratching. Like, oh, I'm, so, I'm so hungry for the chocolate and the chips. Ooh. And then I can't, I have to have it. Otherwise I'll like lie in bed being like, I can't sleep. I need it. Ah. It's a vicious cycle. How's the gym going? Not great. I cancelled the membership to the sec to the like the first gym because I joined two gyms. So I've cancelled that membership, and now um, because I've been on like a two week sort of break from work, um, the gym is close to where I work. So I used to go to work and then to the gym. But work starts again tomorrow. So fingers crossed. It's just twenty minutes at the gym cushion, and then I need to eat a bit healthy, and then get rid of my nasal spray addiction, my sugar addiction, my salt addiction, and my addiction to carbs. Life's really difficult. I just want to finish with this stupid, weird trend that got this woman into trouble. And this is where I think we... I get scared saying, oh, we're getting, we're getting too PC um, because... Are we? Oh, I don't know. I feel like we are. We're getting too offended by everything like we're offended by everything um this girl noticed that a lot of these models sort of do this pose where they're like oh you know they, they lift up their uh, they put their hand to their temple and they push the skin back a bit and they're like oh model and on instagram and she used a hashtag when she did it called just doing the migraine pose and it went viral and everyone's writing about it and everyone's doing this thing. And this woman got so much hate being like, you don't understand what a real migraine is like. How dare you mock us? Like, it's not funny. This is bad. So I'm like, well, your migraine, they are bad. They're awful. But it's like, I don't know. I don't know because I've never had migraines. It's just, it's a parody like it's not real. Like she's just doing this thing for migraines. And then I was like, okay, what if she called it the cancer pose? I'm like, oh, ooh, that's a good, that's a good like rebuttal. Like I'd be like, well, then I'm like, oh, lots of people have cancer. That's sort of not appropriate. And then I'm like, well, how's that different to people who, who suffer from like horrific migraines, which is also a lot of people. And I was like, oh my god, I'm so torn. Like. <laughs> It's like putting a scarf on your head and being like, cancer scarf when you don't have cancer, right? And uh, you just, like, I sit here, I'm like, oh, I'm so torn. And I'm like, yeah, maybe she shouldn't have done the migraine pose. You know, I don't suffer from migraines, but I'm sure if I, but then I feel like if I had severe migraines, I probably would think she was ignorant. I'd be like, Ugh, ignorant. I wish. I wish she got a migraine to know what it feels like. And I'm like, oh my god, is that too PC? Am I offended too easily? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to upset people. And then that falls under the guise of like, was she being comedic? But she's not a comedian. Oh, I don't know what's going on, but she sort of is. And I'm like, oh, it's just too hard. It's just so hard. I just feel like you can't do something without offending a group of people. I just feel, I don't know whether it's because I feel like bad because I'm sure her intentions were good. But then again, you put it back to the situation earlier with Scarlett and the director who chose to put Scarlett Johansson in a role of a transgender man. I'm sure his intentions were good. I just don't know anymore. I don't know. Maybe it's because I don't get offended so easily. Anyway, I don't find it offensive, but then I don't have, I don't suffer from migraines. If she was like homosexual and then made like a 
a dick in mouth, I'd be like, that's funny. Like, I don't, I'm not offended by that. But then again, you don't suffer homosexuality. Whereas migraines, you sort of, you suffer from migraines. Like, oh, I hate it. Whereas homosexuality, you enjoy it by putting your dick in your mouth. So then it's, it was an odd tangent. Anyway, have fun. (laughs) 